So our truth comes from the solar plexus center. So leading questions for us could be, does this make me happy? Or do I want to experience whatever the thing you're trying to do? And our decision-making time frame is at least 24 hours up to a week, depending on how big this decision is. So if you can see, it is very different from what we a- just covered. Yeah, and so now what we pointed out at the beginning of the show, this is the solar plexus, the newest awareness. Um, God gave us a good lead time. Uh, basically, it was some time before the birth of Jesus, after the after the death of Buddha, uh, this thing came into the body. It started to become genetically available. Um, we've had a long time for this thing to just sort of start gestating and turn into this nine-centered being. So it is new, and it is not fast, and it mirrors what the founding fathers did for us when they set up a court and they they put that third rail in place when they made the three branch they always had the first two branches there was always a king ruler and a legislature's parliament of some sort when they put the just judici- the judiciary in there to slow everything down it's as if they added a solar plex right at the time the revolution was taking place which is right at the time of the change oh that nice. that's an interesting uh it's not, note. An, accident. It's not an accident if I say, hey, we're going to go to the, we're take, I'll take this to the Supreme Court. Everyone says to themselves, great, I'll see you in a couple of years. It's <laughs> like everything down. It truly really does. And, and then, and, but it comes to clarity and it puts a sort of absolutism in the air when it does. So uh, the interesting part about the emotional authority is you have emotions in an internal closed circuit that are happening regardless of what's happening in your life. So you're feeling sad, you're feeling angry, you're feeling hope, you're feeling hopeless. All of that is happening all the time in your body in a closed loop. That's what that means. Even if you know you could be having the happiest day of your life, suddenly you might just get a pang of sadness. Where'd that come from? You'll see. <laughs> but it's not from something outside. And, and well, even if it ends up being something as it relates to what's outside <clears throat> the point moana is making is don't go asking your question what is it yes really allow and don't let anyone ask you what's the matter and, and feel like you have to have an answer to that mm-hmm. once in a while there will be an answer my dog died you know yeah that's, I mean, that's uh, the so reason for it's like this suddenly start having feelings but your feelings aren't limited to dog died they're vast yeah. emotions, it's everything, and you might not even feel anything for days, or maybe it'll hit you right away. So mm-hmm. it's it's there's a lot. It's juicy. there's a lot. You'll see. You'll see. So uh, you know, emotional intelligence is something that innately comes with people with emotional authority. Uh, and it, it doesn't come from okay, so this is an interesting thing. So there can be two different types of emotional intelligence. There's the emotional intelligence that people feel when they're undefined because they're taking in what the emotional authority is putting out and they actually feel it themselves. But the way emotional authorities gain their emotional intelligence is through relation. So when they see someone going through a thing, it's like, oh, I've gone through that thing. I can relate. And that's how they're able to spot things. It's like, oh, yeah, been there, done that. So they're feeling their emotions so deeply all the time, they can see it in someone else. They might not be feeling what that other person is feeling, like an undefined emotional will, but they can see it very clearly because they were there themselves. It's an experiential. Right, out. Like the undefined emotional person, you know, has the potential to. You're absolutely right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because the undefined emotional also is incredibly empathetic, but quickly and not necessarily for, through the duration. Only the emotional mm. person has the kind of empathy that would be ne- possibly willing to sit through it all more easily, more readily. Right. So the solar plexus center is pulsing out energy con- constantly, consistently. Right. It's just doing its thing. Right. And part of that is <laughs> having emotional highs and having lows. And this is represented in a wave. So we're going to get more into this in detail, but this is just to give you an overview. And like I mentioned, it's a closed system, but that doesn't mean that you're not influenced by others. 
it's just another layer. So you're going through your own stuff that has nothing to do with anything. And then there's stuff that happens to you that just adds to it. So right, lots that of has feelings. To do with other things. Right, exactly. <laughs> lots of feelings. Um, and I think I, I already, ooh, did I have the same thing that's twice? A good, that's a good delineation you got going right there, Moana. It is beautiful because that closed circuit, the way you're describing it, is, is actually very deep. It's very good. It really I, is. I just realized I have you're right. The emotional flow, what's happening underneath the chemistry of it is bringing the being to some form of new clarity over time. Mm -hmm. That's so personal. That's such a closed loop. That's like, dude, we're on our own clock. I realize I'm getting input from the outside as I go through this wave, which is what I'm supposed to do. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to have all that because I need my clarity as it relates to how I'm going to navigate out here in the world. But internally, this not it has nothing to do with the outside world yet it's just a divine chemistry bringing you through this process of clarity making by which your outside world will interface with just fine once you get there and along the way Perfect. as long as people are aware yeah so understanding the emotional wave okay so you experience the wave um not only as a reaction to life events, which is what I mentioned, right? The closed system. This wave is going up and down, up and down, up and down, regardless of the things. And um, what was it? And thank you uh, for noticing these pictures. I chose them myself to try and make them. I love the pictures late. you have. These things are amazing. Right. Uh, and you will go constantly and randomly go through highs and lows so constant and random highs and lows and here's the thing when you first come to know this information you're like this sounds awful what i don't want this but when you're super super high and when you're super super low that's when your best ideas show up that's when your creative bursts show up right Think of the best songs, the best movies. It was either written in a high or a low. That's a fact. That's a fact. And even if they're planning along and they're not moving in their wave and they're writing their song, as soon as it starts to touch them, they're going to move in that wave higher or lower to give, to add that extra clarity to the music that they're composing all day long. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right. And so we're emotional beings. Humanity is an emotional body. Mm -hmm. We've always so, wondered the name to give that and all that stuff. You're looking at it. Humanity is an emotional body. It's beautiful. So, um, it, so here's the thing. Emotions themselves can be uh, criticized, right? Like It's like, oh, you know, don't have an emotional outburst in public. That's so embarrassing. Right. Um, so we want to bring some understanding and compassion to it. Right. So like you mentioned, you know, the juicy part, each emotion that you experience is adding on a depth of understanding to whatever the thing you're trying to understand is. And over time, you doing that, well, you know, you're not even having to do anything. You're just being <laughs> this depth will end up cultivating compassion for others resilient in yourself because you know boy have you gone through the ringer emotionally yeah. even yeah. without things happening to you and wisdom so there is a good part that comes from this is these things Dan, you have anything to add before we go to the next thing no i i like this this cult this resilience this wisdom you get smarter as you see your wave you recognize that thing has been building and giving me intelligence this whole time, this whole time. And and when you see it, it becomes profound in that moment. Every time I explain, do you remember when I explained it to you, Moana? I was like, dude, you ever notice it never sticks around? It can't stay. The feeling? Yeah. yeah. Uh, actually, no, that's not completely true. And I have some slides to show you what that okay, means. Cool. <laughs> so this is Danny Psychic. This is what you, you just rolled us into our next slide. Okay. So the not sticking around part doesn't happen when you hold on to the emotion. Right, right. So this is another case of, um, so in, in the sacral thing where I said you're, you're holding on, to, you're, you're going into fear and anxiety over past and present, uh, I mean, past and future, right? 
in this case, this is very much going into the past. You keep replaying that thing and that feeling over and over and over again as yeah. someone who, again, wishes I had human design much earlier than I figured it out. I'm like, I wish I knew this. And I was doom spiraling. This is what I like to call yeah. it. Doom spiraling. I love that. This is, this is doom spiraling. You're like, oh, you know, how dare they say that thing? That means this. And then you start pulling for events that support up that thing that made you feel that thing. And you just keep piling it on and piling it on. And what happens is you are not, not operating your wave the way it's meant to, which is what Danny said. Correctly, it will just pass. The feeling will pass and go to a new feeling. But when you're doing this doom spiraling, packing on the reasons for why you're feeling that and how dare they and all the ways, da, 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 it will linger. It could linger. I've had it linger for as long as years. Right. Of course. Of course. And and one of the big lingerers I've always found is this self-dislike or the blame of another. It's oh, your yeah. fault. That blame thing will hold that other person to hold that other energy into your emotional process for years, potentially. Oh, yeah, I've had it for sure. I mean, just like for years, you hold on to that grudge. Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't know if grudge holding is an emotional authority. Um, hey, well, it can be oh. anything, but if you have an emotional authority and you're grudge holding, it's an emotional process. It's not fun. I will yep. tell you that. It's not fun lingering in those feelings that should have passed long time ago. Right. But True. how do we deal with that? So more conditioning, right? So this is the conditioning around emotion specifically, right? So people usually label your emotions as a good emotion or a bad emotion. You're angry. That's bad. Oh, you're sad. That's bad. Instead, right. let's reframe the language. Let's say I'm on a high right now. I'm just feeling a little low right now. Right. It takes away the, the, the sting of it's like something's wrong with me right. if I'm feeling the bad emotions. Right, right. No, I totally get that. And one of the things that goes along with this, is it bad? Is it good? You know, just this whole, the emotions are being labeled in this way that's hard to deal with. Happy and sad up or down up or down has been always sort of one of my favorites it's just, or it's on the move i was like pointing out no my emotions are moving it's it's mm -hmm. or pick the word melancholy instead of like depressed or something something like that yeah it's that's exactly what, that, what that it the is. movement makes you intelligent down lower in your wave when it's you're not feeling good and you think it's not good you're getting more intelligent wicked fruitful mm -hmm. fertile things are happening down there Right. So like, you know, Danny mentioned the low emotions are depression, anxiety, weariness, right? And having those emotions, they're, they're still stigmatized. It's like, oh, they're depressed. You want to yeah. stay away from depression or like, oh, they're anxious. They're so anxious. So they yeah. have anxiety, right? And they turn it into, um, what's the word? They're turning it into a personal um they yeah, are self-identifying and self-labeling with the feelings that are supposed to be transient so instead of saying i am feeling depressed you're saying i am depressed i am feeling anxious i have anxiety and it becomes a much more prolonged thing and you don't accept all parts of your emotional wave right Right. Um, and same thing with the highs, right? You know, people are happy when you're happy or, you know, people think you're palatable when you're neutral, right? But the truth of the matter is all of these are part of your experience as having an emotional authority. So when you don't accept all parts of you, these fluctuations are either more frequent or they're more severe in how you feel them. They're like, whoa. Uh, when they're not supposed to feel that severe. So types of emotional waves. So um, there's more than one type. So the, the feelings that you will cycle through again, no matter what's happening, is you'll feel hope, you'll feel pain, you'll feel joy, you'll feel despair. Um, but there's different waves in how they look. So in order to know what kind of waves you have, 
this is a handy time for you to pull up your body graph. So the first wave looks like this. This is a source wave. And you are looking for the channel 59.6 in your body graph. So if you're looking at your body graph, see if you have the number uh, 59 colored in. And if you have a line connecting it to number six, if you have those two numbers connected, that is called a channel. And specifically, that channel is a source wave channel. So if you have that, how does that feel, right? So for the most part, if you're looking at this line, it looks mostly straight. However, when you're around others, this is when it feels more intense, right? So like I mentioned, it's mostly stable, but it, it needs to have somebody around you to bring you to um, awareness. Oh, unless they're missing somebody. Oh, uh, if they're longing for somebody. Longing, else? then they will be alone with their emotional wave and it will take place. Um, mm, it, regardless. What I'm pointing out is 59.6 is about intimacy. It's the generated capacity to have a sustained energy that points at the openness to some form of intimacy and union and communion and, and literally getting together. So oh, then it makes perfect sense that it needs somebody around to have that show up. Totally always needs. Yeah, that's where it's going to move the most is in and around others. Absolutely. And then later when they go home, if they're all by themselves, it'll still be moving from mm -hmm. whatever they yeah going through with all of that yeah so it, again looking at like the visuals right you, you it's pretty gradual and consistent fluctuation between the peak and the valley like it's not like crazy severe swings um and you you get very intense emotions when you're around other people and then it is crazy intense swings on a level plane i mean it'll just sort of like, uh... like down. wow this is this is strong it's because mm -hmm. it is strong it's sacral generated and it is an emotional wave and it is biting and cutting if it goes too unhealthy yep mm -hmm. so in, when you have this wave it is super important for you to spend some time alone to go back to neutral before you make a decision and the type of energy you have it draws closeness to others and intimacy like danny mentioned well it just it does because gate 59 in that channel breaks down the aura to the other it's called the aura breaker it oh. literally it literally actually breaks down the aura and the other um <laughs> now we get to a much more fun looking way <laughs> oh yeah when you compare the, what we just looked at to this oh nelly okay so we have the tribal wave so friends again if you have your body graph handy you are looking for either channel 1949 or channel 3740. If you have either of these or both of these, you have the tribal wave. So when you look at this wave, right, it intensifies, right? So it, it has a little mini wave that's going up, 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 up. It's a ratchet wave. And, it, and it's like a step forward, a step back, a step forward, yeah. a step back. And it's constantly moving along its emotional wave to where it's either a step forward and it feels okay or it keeps taking too many steps back and suddenly it'll crash down and mm -hmm. so this, this particular wave has the ability to be very powerful suddenly in the now oh yeah so you can see the crash like here right yep. it's yeah it's either it resets to the bottom or it crashes so you'll experience yep. one of the twos yep. um and the pressure is released uh with some emotional outbursts yep <laughs> normal again we're trying to take out the stigma away from feeling the feelings um so if you have a tribal wave and you have random emotional outbursts uh that's someone's breaking the deal you can't make a deal there isn't some trust somewhere someone isn't holding up their end of a bargain there isn't a sense of the right needs being met there isn't a sense of the right sensitivity to your needs there isn't the feeling of support for what it is you're doing and or the support you gave them in the first place all these things are showing up they're tr notice i labeled a bunch of things that are about tribal yeah. tribal goings on so being up close and personal almost always having to do with the other mm -hmm. always having to do with the other 
So this also operates on a physical touch basis. So for example, I know my kiddo has this wave. Um, so when I, I, I can see it now, I can witness him going up, 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 up. And when I see it, I'm like, Ooh, if I touch him, he could just push, just outburst. So I yep. ask, I ask, I'm like, do you want a hug right now? If he says right. yes, then I'll only give it to him then. If he doesn't want one and I hug him against, you know, his mm-hmm. wishes, it will burst. Right. <laughs> it bursts and it's like, oh, no. Oh, what does no, that teach us? This touch, which is one of the keynotes of this stream of awareness, which from 19 all the way up to 40 is a stream of awareness. One of our amazing streams of awareness. It's the one. It's a stream of awareness that will survive the shift in 2027, or at least partly it will. Um and so this is this is it's a big deal and touch matters it matters and it's needed don't not touch your tribal child make sure they are touched Mm -hmm. and danny already you know went ahead and covered these bullet points (laughs) but not not like he said right this this wave is very closely connected to how your needs are met in relationships that matter to you and that are close to you period Tribal. Right. Right. And physical affection is very important. So to someone who has this channel, cuddling, hugging, petting animals, like it's, a, you, it's part of your design. You you need this. So yes, my kiddo loves cuddles. I love cuddles. I have a tribal wave um, channel as well. Um, and the way to, you know, better navigate this wave is you always communicate what your needs are because people are not mind readers that's something i had to learn i was like people should just know that's just a good manners no people know nothing right people know nothing you have to tell them out loud what you need uh and when you expect a bunch of things in your mind and when the things don't happen you get that crash it's called an emotional um what is it God, not emotional. It was expectation hangover. Because yeah. you have all these in, invisible, unspoken expectations. Don't yeah. have that when you have a tribal wave. Just just say it out loud, what you need. It will save your wave feeling really awful. It will save the people around you from feeling like, I don't know what happened. <laughs> because it's so powerful, all the emotional waves are worth following the manifesto strategy of informing the other. And where the manifestor informs as it relates to resistance and their movement in their way, they could also be informing as it relates to keeping this emotional process in a in a in a lot in a way that is is healthy still. Mm-hmm. Instead of letting it go out of out of balance. But this one here, informing, hey, my needs aren't being met, dude. We got this issue. Mm-hmm. So Sorry. one of the, the you know the last things that you can do is like engage in sensory things, right? Like it brings you back to your senses. So, you know, it's kind of like the last thing we talked about. Um, and you know, something with your hands is ideal. So you know, if you're into knitting, do that. Uh, I like to uh, groom my bunny when uh, I'm like feeling icky. Like something about you know touching his soft wool and like you know brushing him out it just like takes me out of all of the things that are happening inside of me and there's something particular about this this channel has one of the three main gates in it that interfaces our existence with the rest of the animal kingdom that's gate number 49 Mm -hmm. it's in the stream of awareness everything about the stream of awareness has to do with tending the flock and touching the animals and and ultimately sacrificing the animals too Mm-hmm. You know, the butcher is in here. Someone's got to be the butcher. No one likes to think about it, but someone's a butcher, right? Yeah, for anyone who has no idea what Danny just talked about, he is going over gates, which is a very advanced topic that we will cover in some oh, way future yeah. time. Oopsie. Thank you, Moana. <laughs> Danny. <laughs> Ah, all right, so our next wave is the individual wave. So I was listening to a lecture right before I came on about this, uh, well, about all the waves, but this one was very interesting in particular because the way it's felt, it, it kind of feels very stable until it's not. Right? Right. That's what these straight parts are. You're like feeling full, feeling good, what? Or feeling good, feeling good, oh my God, I feel awful. So it... It's just 
spikes. severe swings, the spikes. It's severe. It's it's kind of it almost feels like it's coming out of nowhere. Um, yeah. so you know, it's usually labeled as a moodiness. It's like Very I, much can't, a moodiness. I can't yep. read you. One moment you seemed fine, and then the next moment. No, you're you're wanting to bite my head off. What happened? Um, it's so people, individual and so unique. It's look what it's it's really looking for. It's looking for that its wants are met. It's all about wanting. Wanting is the primary key, a primary keynote on this whole stream, and and this want as soon as it's not met, then all I can't talk about the gates because I'm the Moana said, but all the keynotes of the gates do come in as it relates to my spirit doesn't feel high, my spirit feels low. I don't have what I need. I, I don't, and it's not even about need. I just, the right connections with others don't feel, I don't feel a little closeness, the romance. I don't feel like hearing it. I don't want to say anything here. It's just, this isn't good. And down so you the, go. The interesting thing about, you know, people with this individual uh, wave channels uh, is before they found human design, a lot of them might uh, have been clinically depressed and once they figured out they have this wave like for example our guest tressa how she understands that's her body's mechanic so when she goes into that crazy crash it's like oh i'm in my melancholy right it's just my body's way of just being and there's nothing inherently wrong with me melancholy is the, the these are the chemistries in our body bring us to incredible intelligence. The discomfort of the emotional wave and or the extreme comfort with the emotional wave, that's one way we get to our clarity. It makes us intelligent. Fear is another one, right? Mm -hmm. You know, fear makes us intelligent. It's fear mm -hmm. drives intelligence. There's just no question. Generalized melancholy, moodiness, and sadness is the third one. It's a huge, huge driver of our intelligence. Basically, it keeps telling us that the most profound chemistries in our body that gives us sadness are also the ones driving most of the intelligence. Mm -hmm. So one thing to, to know is I know I said that your wave is operating in a closed system, but with the individual wave, unlike the previous wave where we talked about tribal, right? It's very much a people thing. So is the source one. It's a people thing. The individual thing, uh, individual wave is very not related to external circumstances whatsoever not like the other two that not still like has a tinge of it. Oh, it's still related to certain circumstances. I get what you're saying, but it is mm -hmm. if anyone was the most closed loop, it would be this one. Yes. Right. It's happening inside because it's unique individual mm -hmm. stuff. The reason it's a spike wave is because all the awareness inside of an individual definition or gate is in what's called a pulse, a creative pulse. Mm -hmm. It's the and, it, and creative is chosen on purpose creation just like god said let there be light creation right that creativity of that pulse isn't there until it is that means this thing spikes or it doesn't it's mm. just it, it's just like that moment you have the greatest idea and suddenly it's this thing that it's so unique and you got it that's the first mm. time the universe that ever happened it happened in you it's unique it fits the definition of literal creation it's mm -hmm. in a pulse so it just happens by virtue of this pulse that we, is outside of our timing we can't choose the timing yeah. it's independent of our will to control it mm -hmm. it's all these beautiful things that mm -hmm. we know in the esoteric knowledge but yeah it's beautiful yeah and like when you're when you're in your high right, you 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 feel the need to go socialize and hang out with people that you enjoy uh yeah. during your low that's your body's way of going you need some alone time you need some time to just process that maybe you know express yourself through creative whatever it is right whether it's like drawing painting sculpting writing a song whatever your thing is uh for creative outlet right um and that's why they're there like you said all the creativity is born out of these fluctuations in your wave right and they pass quickly like if you see like the little triangle they're not like huge right they come and they go as long as you don't judge them you don't label them you don't start questioning them they'll otherwise the spike goes down it looks like a big block and it'll stay there deeply all kinds of things can happen down there because it's so alone it's mm -hmm. so alone you're only you it's so unique this mm -hmm. one just smacks of feelings of isolation if it goes mm -hmm. too long, you don't realize what it's doing. Mm -hmm. So just, you know, follow the, the, the good practice of, oh, I'm in a high. Let's spend some time with people. Oh, I'm in alone. I need some alone time. 
and that's one um, easy way to help you navigate that channel. Then we come to the abstract wave. Now, uh, if you have this, you have either channel 3635 or channel 4130. So this one operates on desire and feeling, and it has peaks and it has valleys. Out of all the waves, this is the most dramatic one. And uh, it has you know, very, very big eyes and very, very low lows. And the most- Going through this, in oh, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, and, and this one, it's kind of related to the tribal one because it, it has a lot to do with expectations. Maybe I was keynoting this one. <laughs> it's when your expectations are broken. That's yep. when this one feels real nasty. But yep. yes, you, you. what did you want to tell me before I was going to go on? To well, because, because it's always going through the process of being hungry for the experience, which is the desire it has and clinging to that feeling of wanting and all that feeling of crisis because you don't know what it's about until you finally reach the end and gotten what you hoped you would expect it or gotten your expectations dashed. If you if you got what you expected or whatever, if it felt good, you, you feel full now. You filled up, so the gas tank is full, but it's about to, it's, it's full for the next few hours until you drive it down, you need to fill back up again, get hungry again. So mm -hmm. it's about like it's, a stomach. You wanna feel, yeah. So this one, uh, I guess it makes a lot of sense where it's like you you have a very, uh, you know, you can, you can envision the things you want and, you know, the things you want in your life, the things you want in your experience. And I believe I have the abstract wave channels as you well. Do. Yeah. yeah. So that's why I'm like, yes, in my head, if you ask me what I want and what I see for myself, uh, that would be, you know, ideal world. It's very easy. Uh, yeah. I want to go do that thing and see that thing and be with that person thing. Very experiential. And it's the experiential wave. It says, it says, I desire this mm -hmm. or I desire that. It's a stream of desire for an awareness and it just wants to try the next thing. Oh, Danny, I just had a big revelation. I'm understanding. I'm like, there was this abstract wave. I had this whole picture painted of what my life was supposed to go like. And when the thing happened where my expectation of being able to do that didn't happen, it was horrendously painful. Like really, really Expectations bad. become the killer of this wave and it infects the rest of humanity because humanity has been conditioned by this wave so deeply that I don't know anyone that isn't loaded with expectations. So we I have mean, actually a question here. Um, so what if you only have half of it defined? And if you are around hanging. someone with the other half, so she's talking about hanging gates. Yeah, electromagnetic, then suddenly, you guys are going to experience that experiential wave together and where that comes into where you guys meet in the middle essentially because you have one gate and they have the other you'll both experience certain expectations but one will have it stronger the one with the gate of expectations and the other one will have more the feeling of the crisis gate 36 but you'll both be experiencing this incredible high of wanting to go experience that thing and mm -hmm. then it and but it won't but if you're not emotionally defined, it also won't carry the same emotional wave as someone with an emotional definition. You'll just carry it in the now. And then, and, and when it comes crashing down, the crash isn't quite the same because if you're not emotionally defined, you'll mm -hmm. both experience that as, well, that's over. I hope we're not bored with each other. Yeah, now. it's not the, the same heart crushing feeling I felt. And again, nope. I'm like, if I was explained this to when I was a kid, I don't think I would have been as a teenager. Period. I would have mm -hmm. felt like my world was coming to an end because I wasn't able to fulfill the thing that I, you know, dreamt of. Thought you needed head. to do, right. Right. right? It, I would have been so much more kinder to myself. Yep. So, you know, I would have been so much more compassionate. And, oh, man, this is life changing stuff. So, you know, everybody needs to <laughs> start looking at um, emotional ways and their emotional connections yeah one other thing for that question by the way if that if you have an electromagnetic in this stream of awareness um you should really ask some more questions because you guys are experiencing lots of cool things with it and some of them aren't so easy and some of them are a little bit crazy like you might both or one of you might one of you might think it's too crazy and one of them might love it so much they're doing they're trying you know trying to be it again and so you'll have to come into the middle and and talk about it in such a way that says hey i'm aware we're being pulled away by chemistry it's gorgeous 
but it's it's still it's still not quite ours. We have to be careful. Let's just be uh, careful. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah. I might not like listen. You know, one it usually has something to do with physical experiences. So one partner might say to the other, "It's like, listen, I'm, I don't know, I'm not full of that. Is the way you are the same right now? But I understand we both get swept away at that thing or whatever. So it's about just communicating. If you're generators, obviously you're just gonna say you're just gonna communicate and say what you feel or it doesn't matter what type you are say what you feel yeah say what you feel um, Boom. this 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 emotional solar plex requires informing mm -hmm. so you know here's here's some of the the the, the pillars for decision making when you have an emotional authority right so these are me trying to make it into the common denominators okay so when you're feeling ha happiness or you're feeling expansive right it's a sign that this thing is right for you, right? But if, you know, in contrast, if you're feeling weighed down, if you're like kind of collapsing, if it's bringing a heaviness, you know, unhappiness, it you know, discomfort, it's probably not aligned. If you're just kind of feeling meh, or you're like, mm, I'm not sure, that for you translates to a no for now. Right, because going along with just okay mediocre choices ends up later on down the road like draining your energy and it's absolutely right. not worth it. And no. now there's a difference. This is very similar to when we were doing over sacral. There is a difference between a no and fear, right? Fear yeah. feels like a buzzing, while a no just feels just empty. Like it's it's empty, it's neutral, and it, there's no exhaustion um attached to it. So to tell those part did have anything to add yeah the whole idea of witnessing this feel happy up weighed out down you know feeling neutral you're in the middle the whole idea of watching this emotional process is to watch that it's always moving and that its purpose is to bring you to a certain clarity it comes it's about the stages in your life and the stages in a day the clarity is you're strong about that's that's the way it is that's the clarity we haven't had that in our lives very easily um, many, many times. That's why I use the Supreme Court analysis because they're the ones that bring the clarity ultimately, you know, in that system anyway, so. Right, so step one, give yourself at least 24 hours, uh, up to a week if it's a bigger decision to clarify, uh, you know, your decision as it's presented. Absolutely. And and that whole giving yourself time comes with this beautiful phrase. I, I'm not sure I need to sleep on it. I don't make quick decisions. You yep. just, that's informing. That's by the way, that's informing. Doesn't matter right. what your type is. You're just informing. Like, I, just, I just need more time. Give me more I time. I just need more time. And the big thing about this is the deepness of the clarity. It doesn't matter how long it takes. Like we all know some some things don't become clear until you've moved out of puberty into uh, your 20s or out of your 20s into your 30s. So don't latch yourself too much onto the time frame. Most things will fall into this time frame totally, but don't yeah, latch onto one. Just recognize the sensation. Yeah. The dust is settled and you're just pretty clear. Anyone can right. bring it up and you're not going to go spiraling out of control. You've reached clarity. Mm. Wait, are you jumping a bunch of steps? Yes, potentially. Step two. <laughs> uh, you're emo you have to check in on your way, right? Where are you? Are you on the high side are you on the low side or in the neutral side uh yeah. if you are feeling a super high or super low uh keep waiting um step three you keep checking in until you hit that not super happy not super sad uh part right so the, the previous slide was you going through the wave at least once you know when you feel immediately happy when you did the thing ideally you wait for another ping of happiness to come in and if that still feels right for you that's what you want to do instead of just like that the first the clarity get... right uh, this right. word neutrality i would i would swap out for the word clarity it seems like sure. in this, at least in this context. no this is in i'm talking about this in this in the terms of feeling Okay. So neutrality is how you're feeling you're not feeling super super high you're not feeling super super low you're just buzzing along in the middle right yep. so when you finally feel that neutral space you you know picture in your mind's eye uh doing that thing that you're trying to decide on like visualize it um you know connect with your body feel you know feel the emotions that come up if the emotions that are coming up is happy when you're seeing this play out in your head 
that's most likely a yes. If you are not feeling that, then you could say, you know what, that's a no for now. If it feels fear, if you're feeling fear, again, give yourself more time, ride out the emotions until you feel neutral again, and then start over. But again, if you've ridden your whole wave and you can see yourself, if that thing is going to make you happy when you do it, that is a sign that this is a right decision for you. That's the thing. You, you nail it. And it's literally way, what happens at that time is this clarity I keep talking about. You're looking for this. It's a fairly deep sense of, of clarity. Mm hmm Yep. So like, like, um, so, you know, there's the wave riding thing too. So for, I'll give an example. So I was working a job that the entire time, it, when you're emotional authority, your emotions are your compass. It felt icky. And the longer I did it, the more ick it felt until the point where the ache was so bad, I just couldn't take it anymore. And that was my body going like, this is not right for you like no you're not even feeling a tinge of happiness right. doing this thing if you've been feeling yucky about this for so long like it's time to cut loose like to some people it might have been like oh like you took that decision so quickly you just like quit and i'm like no 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 i've been feeling icky about this for weeks right and i was just ignoring it ignoring it ignoring it it's it's can't ignore it that's the point yeah. Um, and then, you know, you have pressure to respond quickly, right? It's like, oh, you're taking too long. What do you mean you need a week? So this is like a very, very classic case of conditioning for emotional authority. It totally. takes you right away from your nature because now you're thinking. Instead. You're like, I need to come up with an answer right now. And then you just make something up from your mind Yeah. versus you know, letting your, your emotional authority actually give you the and clarity. By the way, when you have an emotional authority, you're wicked prone to do that because mm -hmm. you know, if you're up on your wave and someone presents you with something, you don't want to say no. Mm -hmm. so let's keep going. Let's do, you know, so, so yeah, it drives certain amount of spontaneity plenty of times. Right. And Thank I kind you. of touched on this one already where, you know, when you're feeling a thing, we don't allow yourself to show it. It's it's like societal expectation that you are pleasant all the time. It's, even when you're low, you have to put on a brave face right. and, you know, fake smile through the whole thing, right? Yep. And that's conditioning. Um, and struggling with being decisive, right? It's like, what do you mean you can't choose right now? You should be able to choose right now. You should be able to just know. But, you know, your your wave is a process. It's like, you know, I need to feel what it's like if I do this thing in a happy point, in a low point, in a somewhere in the middle point. Um, and you, you just have to be patient with yourself. And people might think you're dramatic because you are feeling all these emotions. You can be hard to read. So people can be like, oh, she's being so moody or, oh, you know, she's she's being a type of way just like, mm, right. and it's just you know there's there's nothing wrong with you like it's just your design so struggling struggling with decisiveness or indecisiveness being labeled dramatic this these are things that get labeled onto the person because you start thinking is there something wrong with me why am i so sad is there something wrong with me people keep saying what's wrong what's wrong nothing's wrong <laughs> just, just my wave <laughs> just just let it pass Nothing's wrong. By way of uh, standards, we had previously said it does appear as if everything is wrong, but by the new standards, nothing's wrong. Uh, I'm going through a process. It's just, you know, and the other thing is, <laughs> I guess this is a very much a North American conditioning. Our, our saying of how are you is not helping this, right? Because when we say how are you, we don't truly care how you are. We just want to hear the standardized canned responses of it. I'm fine. And you, right. even if that's not true, right. that's what you say. And it's, it's a giant societal conditioning that nobody cares about what you're feeling. It comes in the smallest thing, little things that very question, like I pointed out when we were young and us generators, our parents stopped asking us and started, you know, expressing and telling us things. 
they, they couldn't have known. Same thing with the emotional being. When they're very young, if the parents don't know and the adults don't know, they can't explain it to the child. This is where you get your intelligence, you know, um, in child appropriate ways at the right time so they can integrate that. So, yeah, happens right. in the, the simplest of ways. Right. And then the, uh, the, the, the next thing is like you, you, you kind of get into this debilitating self-doubt uh, because of your previous emotions, right? You stop trusting yourself. You're like, you know, I don't want to feel that way again. So I can't do anything. You know, I'm, you know, I don't want to feel that way. So I'm just going to avoid doing that thing. And yeah. you, uh, there's like a wicked sense of like not trusting. It's like a sad place to be. Uh, it's, you know, I've felt it. I'm sure other emotional authorities have felt it too. It's, oh, they were, yeah, it's this whole self-doubt thing with no one there to work with or to let you know or for no awareness that it's a it's a chemistry that's got it's an actual logical chemistry. Mm -hmm. Um an emotionally logical chemistry. I didn't know those words went together. Apparently they do. <laughs> and that's, that's what that is. So, you know, it's not all doom and gloom, right? Uh, so the tips uh to dealing with all that is again the white light dropping into your body and you know going over your emotions and it'll stop you from over analyzing you know, why am I feeling this thing? Or, you know, is this decision, you know, X, Y, Z. Um, and let your emotional wave guide you to getting to neutral, right? And then it will always also give you the right timing to do stuff. That I don't think that's talked about enough, right? It's like, you oh, know, I need to jump on that. The, the thing's not going to come by again if I don't do it right now. That's not true. The timing Something. is independent of your any mental process you may have. It's independent of will. It's independent of your awareness. The timing arrives. It's up to you to recognize who you are, how your definition works, and know that will inform you exactly what's going to happen during your experiencing the timing of things. So what's that telling us? All the types, including the manifestors, technically have to reorient themselves to recognizing I got to wait for the right timing. Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, wait again, let me sleep on it right yep. so when you say things like that if it, it doesn't make you weak it doesn't make you indecisive it you know it shows it that you are you're confident it makes you emotionally intelligent is what it does yeah it's just like you know i mean it conveys to others that you are confident in yourself that you can ask it's you know you have to ask People are not going to just give you more time. You need to ask for more time when you're doing the things. Um, and avoid... Inform. You're informing them of the more time. If you're a generator, that informing comes as a response. Yo, yo, I need more time. If you're manifesting, yeah. you're just informing. It's natural for you. If you're mm -hmm. a projector, you're recognizing, I better tell them. Mm -hmm. You know, if right. you happen to be emotionally defined for a moment and, and you're a reflector, you know, it's still, you're recognizing, you know, I better say something. Not mm -hmm. that it's the same for them, but right. Yeah. You want to avoid arguments during like a deep, deep low, right? Um, you might say something you regret. <laughs> so. Uh, you inform them. I might say things I regret. Exactly. And uh, I but here's, but here's the thing. I regret it later. So there are times where. Um, you informing is not enough like a person might keep pressing you right yeah and that's that and when that happens you know they're not respecting your autonomy of like you wanting to you know not go there they're but, not right for you but if you're in your experiment witness how that pressing you makes you feel uncomfortable you don't have the answer you don't know the timing hasn't arrived yet doesn't matter if you're a multiply defined ego manifester with everything under the sun designed to make an impact and do. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. you're, a, you're subject and like a generator waiting for the timing. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's, yeah. yeah. So witness just, them pull you out of that and witness it's like, I really don't like this. It's true. I don't like it. Mm -hmm. I don't want to call them bad, but they need to stop and they can't. So they're like a dog with a bone. Uh, that's not right. Me. But yeah, just, I, you know, I know I'm guilty of the last point, right? When I'm in a low, I've said things I wasn't proud of. Um, so, again, <laughs> you know, just tell, tell the person uh, that, you know what, I'm feeling really, really crappy right now, and I don't want to talk about it. Give me, you know, the next morning. And you know what, like with my husband and I, before he knew he that I was emotionally defined, he would keep pushing. He's like, no, 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 we need to resolve this right now. 
right now. We need to talk it out. And I'm like, I'm not ready. I am not ready to talk it out right now. Like, give right. Me and now he knows, doesn't he? He's like, yeah. oh, and he's almost relieved. It's like, okay. Is he actually okay with the not now? No, already? he still feels a type of way, ideally, <laughs> because he wants to get rid of that that pressure from his, right. his undefined. To him, oh, it doesn't yeah. feel good to have it in there because he right, I, my right. waves are still going regardless. Right. You, have a de you have a defined route, right? Yeah. Yeah, so so that puts him under that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So so keep informing him of that. Hey, do you notice the tight feeling in you? That's not yours. That's not mm -hmm. your yeah, do you yeah, like you're, it? You're, you're, you can you're just tell it him. Up for like, me. It's like David, do you do you like that feeling? Does it feel good? You feel no, like no, he's uh, told me it's like his yeah, he doesn't body. like it. Yeah. yeah you're like whistling Dixie, honey. No, and he doesn't. So yeah. <laughs> So yeah, so some good habits, right, uh, for emotional authority is actually track, try tracking your wave. I mean, I should be doing this myself, uh, but I, I at least label them now. Like when I wake up and I'm in a mood, I'm like, oh, I'm here. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm in a low. I hey, know at least now here is a place rather than a nebulous thing of dread and woe mm -hmm. and worry and concern. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, you can track it throughout the day, right? It's like, okay, I feel like this right now. I feel like this in the afternoon, in the evening. And then you can notice how it's fluctuating. And one of the things to do is reflect on lessons you learned during those intense emotions. Because again, Please, you're, for you're the love of God. Because <laughs> that's the whole point. That's, that's the, the whole, whole point. point of you having those emotions. Please. It's supposed to help you gain clarity. Father who art in heaven, please. <laughs> just, just like, if you're not <laughs> reflecting, you're just on autopilot feeling those things, feeling those things and right, not right. leading to the clarity, which is kind of painful for everybody, including yourself. <laughs> so don't do that. Um, Repeat that to yourself. My emotions don't define me. Right. Like, you are not your emotions. So when no. people are like, I am, I have anxiety, I am depressed. I want to like just shake them. You're like, no, no, you're not. This is you're you're holding on to the things that is not, not for you to hold on to. And that emotional wave will make almost anybody wonder if they have a problem. It's so <laughs> simple. It currently still, as we wake up to it more, it won't. But um you can start to see why this knowledge is for children. I mean, if I had, if, if some of the oligarchs came down from wherever and gave me $5 billion, I would marshal this stuff forward into the world for the children. So incredibly, we'd become a machine. You know, it, it's, it's, this is for children. Mm -hmm. They want to get, you know. So celebrate your highs, you know, dance, you know, hang out with your friends, play some Absolutely. music. And when you're lows, also listen to sad songs uh write a sad poem have a good cry watch a Sit sad movie and cry <laughs> like yep. you just allow yourself to feel the things don't express yeah. it especially yeah. the lows um and again release those emotions um uh, one way to do it is grounding like literally grounding like put bare feet on soil and right. it will also bring you um out of that frenzy which is not the most pleasant feeling oh and there we go we have done it yeah we which is really good perfect. what that shows us is these two primary authorities they work really well together by the way and they also work perfectly independent from one another depending on what your inner authority is it's just real important to get yourself read and to get this analysis underway so that so that we can get you to your you moana if i'm not mistaken you now after all this time later since we, we very first read what's going on a year ago is that right oh geez i should look at my emails yeah, and figure that like, out i don't know it's finally been it's a hunk of time finally it's not two weeks ago anymore it's <laughs> right it's not a month ago anymore it's been a hunk of time so you have now noticed correct me if i'm wrong you've totally you have noticed this thing because i remember in the beginning it's like well i don't like it you were informing me and i was like oh she's she's about to manifest for me you know what i mean i'm like <laughs> And and you were you were probably on the verge of manifesting me a little bit you know I mean you just you know I don't like this way don't tell me I have to I don't know if I want to do this and uh, remember that in the beginning and yeah I, I thought it was nonsense nonsense in the way of like why do I have this this is stupid right. <laughs> I don't want to deal with this right right but somehow or other 
it's not so bad and you're starting to recognize that right what what have you seen this is you hun this emotional wave thing you got it twice yeah again wish i had this as a child i would have navigated my myself in a completely different way completely yep. different I, I, again, I would be coming from a place of compassion and kindness instead of, you know, being so self-critical, right. constantly questioning what's wrong with me. Right. Right. My God, this is what an amazing thing. So this now that you've actually started to see this this much, this is worth. Um, how much is that worth to you? I, I, I don't think you uh, could I'm put a trying to make a point just i know you can't yeah. anything on it but but for the sake of let's say you're you know let's say you're a well-off person how much is that actually worth to you a lot isn't it yeah I mean, of this, course this is years of therapy successful which therapy is almost never really successful it only ever gets you to a, a spot and then you're just as likely to fall back or not That's yeah not you you're, you just become so much more away aware of yourself like you know before you're you're kind of guessing you're like you know I, maybe it's this maybe it's that and even therapy or you know modern medicine <laughs> that's all it is is an educated guess right but this is a road map this is just straight up a road map straight up a road map right down the right down the channels of the chemistry right down the life forces they're they're clear two lane highways there or whatever you have your roadmap. You have now your that you roadmap. have it, you know, you just have to be gentle with yourself, oh. right? And for both types of, you know, of authorities, right? There's yeah. there's a conditioning in both and you're conditioning each other. And now you know where that is, right? right. We gave you the map. It's like, here's where you're doing it. Here's where you're seeing it, you know? And now you can be kinder to yourself and to your loved ones and to, you know, that boss that, you know randomly gets angry <laughs> like whatever right 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 exactly emotional clarity the world is dealing with it now think about it you put everyone together you know you, there's eight billion of us at any given time of every given room in every given situation every given gathering what is the design of that room of this planet of your home of everything mm -hmm. it's an emotional manifesting generator mm. just just think about that it's a reality the reality of this planet is Mm -hmm. uh, uh, frustrated, emotionally freaking violent at times, right? Emotionally swinging. We've been asked to make emotional decisions over the whole, make emotional decisions. We have to hurry, you know, and everyone's throwing it in. Generated, frustrated, emotional, aggravated anger and frustration is this planet. So often war, all these things, that's the lack of awareness of this emotional wave is does primary you know what rob would always say thing you know if your solar plex is defined it's the most important center in your body graph and it's a home of your authority your inner authority if it's open and it's not defined it's the most important center in your body <laughs> graph it's a source of great conditioning and that is it right he also said a similar thing pretty close as it relates to the ego too but but it's, it's true because we're 50 50 the forces the whatever's out there um that sort of help create us and all of this assuming we're not alone and i assume I'm, i i was the forces want us to deal with this emotional um 50 50 in our planet they mm -hmm. really want us to make peace with it the open emotion people to make peace with not amplifying it so much the emotional people to make peace with the fact that hey you know we, we stopped checking in when we didn't feel like dealing with your emotional wave at that time. So we don't, di it's not that we don't love you. It's just that we're not what you think you think you want from me right now. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's like so much headache could have been avoided. I mean, um, I think I, I man, it's supposed to be like this. I was emotional. No, your man's not capable. He's right. Not capable. Like He's he, I think He's I told you about it. like a couple of weeks ago, right? I now I I can like again you know hindsight twenty twenty it was like oh the reason I felt so betrayed and let down is because both of my waves went crashing down like the tribe yeah. let me down and then my expectations were not met either right. so it's like both waves smoosh 
Right. So I'm like, yeah. now that explains why I felt like I did. Right. And now there's a greater understanding of it. I'm like, okay, so next time uh, I will make people more aware of right. the things I expect from them. Uh, maybe yeah. I, I didn't do a good enough job. <laughs> Well, just you'll make them more aware and the people who can't hear that you'll notice now more quickly. You'll be so sensitive to that. You'll be emotionally aware and sensitive. And it's like, hey, you know, they're not hearing me. I better not set myself up for too much of this. I can I can see it. I also don't want to make them feel well, whatever. And I'll try it again. I'll say some things. But, if you know, or yeah. you're on call, it's like I can see I'm walking into this dark place. They're, they're not. They don't hear me. They're not actually yeah. seeing the talk. When I'm disappointed about 18 minutes from now, I'll know why, you know, instead, yeah. of, uh, instead of like prolonging it. I like oh, prolonged it for six months. Right. Because I'm like, it'll get, you know, it'll get better. It'll get better. It was not getting better. It not was getting progressively better. getting worse. Right. right. <laughs> and I just, I didn't listen. I should have pulled the plug a long time ago, but right. Okay. It's an experiment. Right. It's right. Experiment. It's experiment. Right. Exactly. It's, it helps us not be so mad at the other guy, at the other person. Yeah, it's a really, it's a thing that ultimately over time, it's we all get aware of. And it's this thing I keep pointing. We need to smooth this thing out mm -hmm. because we unemotional people like myself, undefined, I spent a lifetime trying to avoid that until I was blowing up at it. Unless I was riding the high part of it, but mostly it was I was I spent a whole lifetime recognizing I was always hopping from island to island of avoiding that avoiding it. Mm -hmm. 